All right, guys, this is just something I quickly wanted to touch on the Canadian protests, what Canada is doing. It's completely out of control and sad. Uh, but first thing I wanted to talk about, you look at that. This is the AP News. Look at all of kind of their tabs under, you know, what's trending. You've got trending news, Russia, Ukraine, the pandemic. And then look at this, killing of George Floyd. I just found that odd that that is still trending. Uh, it's almost like they want to divide us even more. But I was looking, I have kind of developed this theory uh, about Canada and about their lawmakers. You can see Canada lawmakers extend emergency powers for truck protests. Emergency powers are just disgusting. In any government, you take a look at what happened with the UK, it's basically an excuse for the government to take away your rights for the betterment of the overall general public and for the safety of the general public. It's absolutely horrible. I was going to make this video even before I saw this headline, but it says Canadian lawmakers voted Monday night to extend the emergency powers that police can invoke to quell any potential restart of blockades by those opposed to the restrictions that are currently go taking place. And it got me thinking, you think about Canada, very liberal, Toronto, Canada, extremely liberal, a lot of lawmakers, a lot of people in power, the prime minister, very uh, heavily leaning towards the left. And then you take a look at two of the, you know, most he heaviest liberal cities in America, New York City and LA. Both of those places also still have the mask policies, the restrictions going on. You know, the last time I had to wear a mask in Target or in a restaurant was probably about nine or ten months ago. I could never imagine with all of the things available at this point in the pandemic still having to be forced to wear a mask at a restaurant, you know, at a gas station, Target, whatever. Uh, it is just crazy. It's ridiculous. And it got me thinking, you, you take a look at liberals in the 21st century, people on the left. This is just coming from an independent, guys. I'm not on the right. I'm not on the left, whatever. Many of these people, are their ideology is to conform to the government. That's their ideology in the 21st century. And now it's like if you go against the government, you're crazy. You're anti-vax, whatever. They'll kill you. All of these people, you take a look at Canada, many liberals, it's we're in favor of the government, this is what's going to happen, and it's an extremely dangerous thing to trust the government with everything because just like that, they can invoke these emergency powers which take away your rights for, I guess, again, the betterment of the people. It's extremely vague, and it's, that's not even the, you know, the worst part of it. You know, we know these truckers were using GoFundMe. GoFundMe disgracefully shut down their campaign and tried to steal their money and actually give it to other, uh, you know, different um, charities, which is just mind-boggling in and of itself. Uh, but it says ma massive financial implications. The federal government is also going after financial support for illegal activity associated with the protests. Convoy organizers have raised millions of dollars. They've raised money first through the GoFundMe crowdfunding site. When GoFundMe shut the fundraising campaign down, they pivoted to that Go Send Go. And now you've got the uh, minister saying that under the emergency acts, again, this the emergency acts, it takes people's rights away. That's the key thing to know. It happened in the UK during the pandemic, this same sort of emergencies act. Uh, crowdfunding platforms and the payment service providers that they use must register with the Financial Transactions and Reports Analytics Center of Canada. The Deputy Prime Minister says the illegal blockades have highlighted the fact that crowdfunding platforms and some of the payment service providers they use are not fully captured under the Proceeds of Crime and Terrorist Financing Act. We are making these changes because we know that these platforms are being used to support illegal blockades and illegal activity, which is damaging to the Canadian economy. So they are trying to make it even tougher for this convoy to gain money. First the convoy, 
goes on GoFundMe, gets a ton of money, $10 million, GoFundMe because this is, I guess, a pro-Republican thing. GoFundMe being, I guess, more of on the liberal side, that's what I'm assuming, that why else would you do this? They said, no, we don't like your fundraising. We're actually going to take those $10 million and give it to some sort of liberal charities, things like that. Again, I'm. this is what I'm just guesstimating. If you're take, this is a kind of a pro-freedom, pro-Republican, pro-right-wing stance that these truckers are taking. If you're going to take that money and then give it to other charities, that's going to be my inference. And now, under the Emergencies Act, they're making it even harder for these people to raise money. It is absolutely disgusting. Again, the main problem that Canada has, whether it's right wing, left wing, whatever, uh, is one, you, when you have too much or too many people in power on one side, you know, this example being left wing, uh, a lot of their citizens who are also left wing, especially in the bigger cities, Toronto, things like that, even in America, examples, LA uh, and New York, they go along with any government measures. The government could tell these people, put a bucket over your head so you don't cough on old people because they could die and the people would do it. And not only would they do it and would they go along with it, they would respect it and they would tell people that weren't putting a bucket over their head that they're being careless and they hate old people and they want old people to die. This is a major issue that people are going to have to wake up on and understand that this type of stuff is just unacceptable. You're going to invoke an act and then let's actually take a look at what does the emergency act do? It says the emergencies act, uh, defines a national emergency as a temporary, urgent, and critical situation that seriously endangers lives, health, or safety of Canadians. Uh, So that very vague, you can use it for pretty much anything. Ottawa police say safety concerns, including aggressive illegal behavior by demonstrators, are to blame for the limited police enforcement capabilities. Uh, So just a disgusting, disgusting thing that's happening right now in Canada. And many of these people are like, this is ridiculous. We're just trying to get back to our normal lives. Um, Again, it's it's happening in LA and New York City. You go to these places, it's crazy. It's like, at what point do you say enough is enough? Um, There's this immediate acceptance to accept whatever the government infringes upon us and anyone going against that, they're the enemy. The government is our friends. They're the enemy when they enact the Emergencies Act. it's not They're not doing it to get more power over us. They're doing it because they, they just want to keep us safe. They just want to keep people safe. And that's what this act was for, right? It's to keep people safe. That's why they're trying, under the Emergencies Act, according to this article, they are trying to make it harder for this convoy to get funding. Yeah, that's that. Uh, yeah, no, they're very safe. It's very. It, it's not because it's going against his policy or anything like that. Yeah, wh- just absolute filth and disturbing uh, scenes going on right now. It's just how fast the government can really control you. They enact one right, and suddenly you can't fund, you know, your convoy. Unbelievable, guys. Unbelievable. Just wanted to touch on that. Again, you've got too much of one political party right now in Canada, and it's creating an unhealthy country because all of these people in power are thinking a certain way. And again, when you see this convo, when you see these protests, the immediate response is to just go harder against it. None of these people, and this happens on the right and on the left, these people are so entrenched in their ways. There's no, oh, maybe the truckers are right. Maybe we should really look into these restrictions. No, it's they're wrong even more. How dare they? We need to take away their rights. Do it now. Kill their funding. All of it. It's to go the opposite direction even more. They're not listening. They don't want to listen. They are entrenched. They don't care what the new science says. They don't care what the numbers say. The case is going down, whatever. They are entrenched in their way and they view possibly easing the restrictions due to the convoy or due to humans as the, you know something that you know they would be proven wrong. They don't want to be proven wrong. So they are going to entrench and say, listen, we're trying to keep people safe and this is how we got to do it. And New York City and LA and any major liberal city where there are a lot of liberals, they will go along with it. And if the government says, put a bucket over your head because we're going to keep you safe. And if you cough on an old lady and she dies, it's your fault. They will gladly put a bucket over their head and they will, they will ostracize and they will criticize anyone who does it and say, you don't care about old people. You want old people to die. It's the same exact thing. It's extremely dangerous, guys, and just wanted to touch on this. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.